Okay, testing. Okay, I think it's recording my voice plus the screen. Maybe. Um, okay, now what I'm going to do is fix this problem, but I'm going to do it in such a way that you could do the same thing. So first, um, just in case you don't have a Linux server running somewhere that you can use or you don't want to install Sage, I set up an account for the class, which you can SSH into, and you can install your own copy of Sage in. And I've, uh, you just have to follow what I'm about to do. In the worksheet for today, I've, I did this as an example, and I put the session there. But you're also going to see me do it, and it's being recorded. So it's called, the account's called math480 at sage.math.washington.edu. And um, I have to remember the password and then tell you. So you know that all there, there's all that stuff in the news about fracking, the oil stuff. So the password is that word and then 1062. So how do you spell fracking? Um, F-R-A-C-K I-N-G Okay, so the password is so you might want to write that down um, it's just fracking 1062 or if you're a Battlestar Galactica fan, that's what you might yell when you're really annoyed by <laughs> this class <laughs> Okay, so this is just a, it's um, an account on a very powerful computer with an exciting, oh, well, something funny with the terminal, don't worry about that. That could cause us trouble. Why is it doing that? I have no idea why that happened. It was math 40 at... Oh, sorry, at sage.math.washington.edu. Uh, I'll put that over here. That's the account, and I will. I'm not sure why I'm getting weird errors regarding the terminal, but okay. So no idea why that happens. Weird. I don't know if that's going to cause us trouble or not. But inside of here, I made a scratch directory, which you should change into, and. Uh, make a directory for your for yourself. I'm making one called wstein. And by the way, if you're just installing Sage yourself, you don't have to do any of this, but you might want to do this if you don't want to bother installing Sage yourself. Okay, um, now I go into that directory. Now I'm going to type tar dot dot x, or sorry, tar extract file dot dot slash sage for eight. And that command will extract a complete copy of the latest released version of Sage into my directory which I will then be able to modify in various ways, create a patch, and post. It is unfortunately not possible to just edit arbitrary stuff in the Sage library purely through the web and create patches yet. I hope that changes within a year, but it hasn't happened. Mm. This should take about one minute, uh, depending on what's going on in the system. But um, yeah, it'll take about a minute. Once it's finished, then we will edit the file that has number of partitions in it, and then we'll check in the change. So as preparation, let's figure out what file it's in. And going back to uh, this, uh, let's see if we do, if we look, when you look at the help for a function, it will tell you the file that the function is defined in. Um, one thing to watch out for is uh, don't actually go into the local lib site packages directory. So this is unfortunately potentially very confusing, um, but I'll show you what directory to go into. It's the very end where it says sage something something, that's the part to look at. So let's see if it's done extracting sage. It is done. And now what we got is a big directory. If you want to change the name of this directory, you can. I think I'll, I'll do so using the move command. So I type move, name, and then another name. And now I have a shorter directory. And you don't have to do that, but you could. Now I go into that directory, and now I have um, the root of the sage install. So this is uh, what any extracted sage tarball looks like. And it has some information about the copyright of the various components of sage, 
It has uh, the various subdirectories with bits of Sage built, pre-built in it, and then most importantly, it has this directory devel, which contains the core Sage library, the documentation, and many other things um, that you'll edit if you're working on Sage. So we'll go into that directory. There's um, a directory for the Sage notebook and a directory for Sage itself. So we'll go into the directory for Sage. Now look around. There's a bunch of stuff. Ignore everything and just go into the subdirectory Sage. Now, there you are. This, these are the top level directories for the Sage library. Um, so if you do import sage.calculus.something, it's going to be looking for code here. If you do whatever else, it'll be looking for code in the relevant place. So where's that number of partitions function? It's in sage combinat partition.py. Okay, so combinat is this directory. And so we look inside of that directory, combinat, type ls, and there's a bunch of files there. One of the files is called partition.py. So that's the file we're going to edit. Okay, and the, I think the simplest editor imaginable, which is on that computer, is called pico, which I will use. So I type pico partition.py, and it doesn't work because of the terminal. What is this? What is it? Okay, I'm not going to have pseudo writes here, but let me do it another. Tr Maybe that will work. Uh, oops, not that. Okay, now run Pico again. There we are. So I ran Pico. It gives me an editor, and now I can edit the file. And it's a really, really simple editor. There are, of course, you can run Emacs or VI or whatever, but you can also run Pico, and pretty much all the commands are right here. There aren't very many commands. And you just use the cursor key to move around. And we have to figure out where this thing is about Perry. So it looks like there's a, you can search in the file with where it is. So I hit Control W, search for Perry. Um, I guess I just keep hitting it. Here it is. So, speed seems to be the same as gap until and blah, blah, blah. But Perry has a bug. So do not use this option. So that part I can just delete. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Um, I don't know how to delete a whole line or anything. Oh, Control-K, cut text. Whoops. Oh, no, I put a tab in. I'm in trouble. Okay. Um, kind of looks like this should be on the same line. Okay, so I've now edited the file. And now I'm going to write it out with control O. File name to write, partition.py, and then exit. Okay, and now the file has changed. If I type um, hg diff, I can see what changed. hg is the revision control system that Sage currently uses. It's also known as Mercurial. It's a distributed revision control system in that every copy of Sage, even the binaries, have the complete revision history of Sage. You can see what you've changed. You can look at what's uh, what anybody else has done. You can see which who last changed a given line of a file, etc. Um, so that's the command we're using right there. And you can see that we've made a change. This is a diff. It shows the lines we've deleted and the lines we've added. Uh, because we edited one of the lines, the diff just deletes it and then adds it back with the change uh, by putting faster up there. Okay, so the diff starts right here and ends right here. And now this is what we need to post to the track ticket. So that, does that make sense? Yes, Sarah. Did you save it already? I, all I've done so far is I was in the editor, I made the change, and then I exited the editor saving the file. So, the, so I have actually saved the changes I made to the file. So I've edited one file, and um, you can also do HD status. That will tell you which files you've modified. So HG status says, oh, of all the files in the entire repository, like thousands of files, that's the only one that's been modified. And HG GIF tells you exactly what change you actually made. So you look at it and go, you know, typically you would look at it and maybe proofread it, make sure it actually makes sense. And then you can say HG um, CI for check-in and hit enter. What it does is it pops up a little editor and it's just Pico again. And you can type in a commit message. And typically the way you should do this is you say track, then the track number, which is 12390. 
and then you give a description of what you've done or you know what this is about there it is and now you um, write it out control O just reading from the bottom to that whatever file it is and now exit okay so I've now checked in my changes now if I do HG status nothing there's no changes uh, after that's been checked in. If I do HG log and pipe that into more, then I'll see the history of my repository. And you can see the very top change set is the thing that we just did. And then there are many other change sets. There are, in fact, 16,399 other change sets. They're all in the repository. So let me exit that. Um, now I can say HG export tip. Well, um, let me do sort of hard to see everything with it so far to the <coughs> the prompt is too big. Um, exactly. Nobody except me and everybody in this class knows that I've done anything or can see that I've done anything. Um, now I can do hg export tip to um, the file that I that I want to call it. So I'll call it track 12390.patch. What this does is it make, makes a patch file that records everything about what I just did. It's just a file which we can look in. That's what it looks like. Um, zoom out so you can see the whole thing. So I just made this file. It's called track12390.patch. It has this header. It has the um, changelog message. And it has the actual change that we made to the code. This is what we're going to post on track. We're going to take this file and put it on track, which is a shockingly tedious thing to do, as we'll see in a moment. but can do it. Um, and then we're done. Almost. Okay, so first we need to actually get this file. It's sitting on this computer somewhere. I'm logged into that computer, but how do I actually get that file back to my own computer? It's uh, kind of weirdly complicated to do that sort of thing. It's the sort of thing they make a lot of jokes about. Uh, but it turns out, and I put a link to this in the lecture, there is an easy way to browse these directories that we're, that we're working with via the web. I just kind of open that up. So right here, and this is in the worksheet for today. Oh, sorry, this isn't the place to look. Um, a little farther down, right here. This allows you to browse the home directories that we were just working with. In particular, Scratch, Wstein, Sage, Devel, Sage, Sage, and then Combinat. And then there's a new file. You can order it by last modified. And there's the patch file. Okay, so that's the patch file that we just created. I just saved it to my computer. And now finally, the very last step is I'm going to upload it to the track ticket. So I attach it. Um, I just downloaded it to my computer. And now uh, I attach the file. And I can check that it looks okay. There it is. And I can go back to the ticket. And now I see that looking at the ticket, um, there's now an attachment, which is the track, which is the patch, okay? And now the final thing that I should do is click that it needs review. And also note that I'm the author. And then submit that change. And now the status of the ticket is that it needs review. And it also says that the author of the patch is me. And uh, at this point, given that it's not building a track, what I should do is email or shout out to somebody in the room, please referee this ticket. So, hey, David, can you referee this ticket? Okay, now I'm going to refresh because I'm eagerly awaiting what happens. And look, I got a positive review. So I can jump up and down. I'm really excited, um, et cetera. And now what will happen is I don't have to do anything else. David doesn't have to do anything else. But the release manager will then take this patch and apply it when he's putting together the next version of Sage. Also, there's a patch bot that should run, which will apply this patch and then run the entire Sage test suite and put something up here which indicates whether or not the test suite passes or what fails. Although I don't know if the patch bot currently works perfectly or at all. Um, so we were working on it over the weekend. Okay, so let me point you to some resources because what I just showed you, obviously you're not going to just remember it all. Um, so first, I did put the session of what I did right here in the worksheet, and I'm recording this as a screen capture. Moreover, 
Um, there are several useful resources that are available, all of which are linked to from the worksheet for today. Um, let's see, probably these, so documentation-wise, there's the main thing to look at is the developer's guide, which is right here. Since that's the most important thing by far to look at, I'll just click on it and show it to you. There's some other things, but that's probably by far the most important thing. This is a, um, it documents how to do Sage development. So the first chapter is called Walking Through the Development Process. This talks about how to modify the source code of Sage, how to uh, create patches, how to update your patches, um, something called Mercurial Cues, which are more pleasant to work with. Um, you can, I mean, but if you want to read through all this, you want to devote a couple of hours. Uh, it's probably three hours to get a pretty good mastery of. Um, and then there's discussion about conventions for writing code. If you're going to introduce a new function, we have to have various conventions about how functions are named, how the documentation is laid out, and so on, so that things look consistent um, throughout Sage. So there's all of that. Um, there's issues with using external libraries, with using Cython, etc., that you should know about. Um, then there's discussion about if you want to add a whole new package of code to Sage, that's, I mean, like a completely separate program that you've written or somebody else has written, what the issues are involved there, how to use the track server, etc. Um, by far, this first chapter is probably what you'd find most important. It's really a far more detailed um, walk through what we just did live up here. Okay. And we are going to be talking more about really this first chapter for the rest of the week. So I highly recommend that before Wednesday, you just take a, you read through it, or at least, I mean, if you can spare three hours, just read through it very carefully and try examples and mess around with it. If you only have 30 minutes, at least read through it. So that's what I recommend that you do very strongly, because then you'll uh, have much better questions for Wednesday and Friday. All right, so let's stop and uh, resume on Wednesday.